Hey guys, Rhett here. What's going on at my client Dwayne's second Section 8 rental property. Guys, Dwayne bought this house for $70,000 as a three bedroom, one bath. We spent $38,000 redoing it. And my goodness, the, the difference in this house from when we bought it is amazing. Number one, we added a bedroom to it. So it's now a four bedroom, which is gonna rent for anywhere between $1,300 and $1,400 a month. It's gorgeous. It was a uh, it was a probate sale. Um, it was an estate sale, so it sat vacant for a couple of years. Uh, it was in really really bad shape. We did a lot of work to this house, so come on in and check it out. I am really really happy with how this house came out, and you know part of this is first of all all new flooring throughout the entire house. It's beautiful. It's bright. I, I, I'm thrilled by the light that comes in here. So a lot of windows and, and really light flooring, light paint, it makes the rooms look even bigger than they already are. So the first thing we did, originally when you opened uh, the door and you opened up into the living room, we had a really big living room, but we had a, a, a wall here that opened up into a huge dining room. We eliminated that. So we ended up keeping the huge living room. We walled this wall off, which you'll see why in a minute. But off of the, off of the living room, we have a nice storage closet here. And then we have bedroom number one. So bedroom number one is, uh, was, was part of the house. And then off of bedroom number one, we have bedroom number two. So, bedroom number two, really nice also. Very clean, crisp, and, uh, and, and a lot of room. The, the theme here is a lot of room. As we walk through the hallway, we have bedroom number three. So, bedroom number three was never really a bedroom at all. This was part of the extended dining room. So we built a closet in here and made this our third bedroom. Now, the difference between a three bedroom home at $1,200 and a four bedroom home at $1,300 to $1,400 is considerable. And it also adds a lot of value to the home. So really, really important when you're, you're looking at the layouts and you're looking at the designs of these rental properties to make sure that we can maximize. And if we can maximize, making sure that we can get a tenant with that kind of voucher in the unit, which in this area, there are so many voucher holders that have four bedroom and five bedroom vouchers that we know a four bedroom will fly off the market quickly. So as we keep moving forward, we, we take this hallway to the end and we're in the kitchen. So really good sized kitchen. We have a working, large, really nice refrigerator. We have a gas stove as well, which is also very nice. We put a new hood vent on here too. Uh, unit still needs to be clean, but otherwise thrilled with this as well. Thrilled with this and, and this is going to fly through a Section 8 inspection. And then lastly guys, our fourth bedroom at the very end of, of the hall. Uh, and it's huge, and it's huge and you have multiple closets. You have areas where you can put a, a, a large king size bed. You are right across from, from the, the kitchen and yet you're still far enough away from the other bedrooms. We did all LED lighting throughout the entire house. Of course, painted everything, uh, did a lot of work to drywall and, and, and did a lot of stuff on the interior. Um, I'm thrilled. I, I am thrilled with this house. It came out amazing. I'm so fired up for Dwayne. This is one of those homes where you just know the people that move in here are going to be in here for a very long time. This property in itself is in a great neighborhood. It's in a quiet neighborhood. It's in a safe neighborhood. We know that we don't have to worry about crime. We don't have to worry about things that might be a problem in other areas and other places. And when you're an out-of-state investor, and you're trying to find the right properties to buy in, in certain areas, in certain cities, 
there's so much that you just don't know. And part of that is making sure you buy in the right neighborhood, you buy in the right street. Yes, of course, the teams are the most important. Making sure you have the realtors and the contractors and the management companies and the lenders and everybody. But you have to know where to buy. And one thing that, that I do with all clients is, is we talk about every house. And if a house is not in a good area, we don't do it. Uh, we don't move forward with it. We might get something under, under contract in a bad area. We'll send our contractors out to check it out. They'll walk through it. And sometimes they don't even get out of the car. They'll call me. They'll say, hey, Rhett, uh, you know, I'm at so-and-so's property. And, and it's in such a bad area that we can't buy here. And otherwise, how would you know that? You wouldn't. You'd buy a house. You'd put a lot of money into it. Or even if you didn't, you'd spend a lot of money on the purchase. And it would sit vacant. You'd wonder why, why, why. And the reason might be it's not in a good area that people want to live in. So important to keep in mind, and, and it all goes back to the same thing, doing it with people in the market that understand what you're trying to achieve and you have a long track record of success in doing so, okay? If you guys want to use my team, if you want to expedite this process, get years of experience without having it, whether it's your first house, whether it's your second, whether it's your 20th, give me a, 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 an email, reach out to me. My email's in the description below, okay? And we'll get you started. It, it's not that hard when you have the right people. So as always, guys, leave your questions, comments below. I'll get to them. We'll see you next time.